Hello everyone and welcome back to another episode of Ushanka Show. Здравствуйте, дорогие товарищи! В эфире программа Ушанка Show. Today we're gonna have a little bit unusual video. We're not gonna talk about Soviet Union, we're gonna talk about Soviet Mongolia. So a brief backstory. A while back, probably about 10 years ago, I received a lot of old Kodak slides from my father-in-law, who in turn got it from his sister's brother-in-law who passed away. Uncle Bill, so you could see him on this photo, uh, he was a single guy, he never got married, never had kids, and he loved to travel. He lived in the Detroit area, I believe he worked in the movie theater like a technician showing the movies, and when he passed away, his uh, indirect relatives, you know, were getting his stuff and no one wanted those slides, so they were about to throw them away. So my father-in-law said, no, I'll keep them. Then he wanted to throw them away. Then I said, okay, I will keep them because I saw there were quite a few slides from the Soviet Union in 1970s and 80s, as well as Mongolia and many other countries. The guy was super organized. So every box has a name. There's a kind of like a paper inside that tells you what slides relates to what events, places he visited. And I believe maybe he was actually making additional money traveling between retirement homes and doing slides presentations from his travels because he went all over. There's a slides from Japan, from Hong Kong, from South America, from Africa, Soviet Union, China, pretty much everywhere. And a couple of months ago, I purchased a nice Epson Perfection V600 photo scanner. So it's actually made to scan photos and slides. So now I have ability to do a quality scans, which you will see in this presentation. And I did Mongolia slides, and that's what we're going to talk about today. Okay, so let's do a quick refresher in geography lesson. Let's talk about Mongolia. So that's the country size of approximately of Alaska. It's uh, around 604,000 square miles. Of course, it's landlocked country. They got uh, Russian Federation in the north, China in the south. So no access to any oceans or seas. And population is only 3.3 million people. Out of that, 45% of population lives in one city, in the capital of Mongolia, Ulan Bator. So very interesting country. And I think Mongolia is the least populated country in the world. So amount of people per square mile is the lowest, even lower than Russian Federation. And this is the Mongolian flag, which existed between 1945 and 1992. After the collapse of the Soviet Union and Mongolia becoming less dependent on its northern neighbor, flag color slightly changed and the star was removed. And this is the flag of Soviet era. And here's the new Mongolian flag. So you see it's very similar. You probably wouldn't notice a difference if you want to pay close attention to the symbols on the left. And before we begin, I would like to mention something about Uncle Bill. It took me a while to find a photos of him. This is so different that culture of taking pictures back in, you know, 70s and 80s versus modern days when people travel, they first of all take a selfie of themselves with the something interesting in the background. 99% of his photos is actually interesting stuff. And I found his personal photos of him like in a separate box. And also I found this, it's, it's the box that made to store slides. And it says college votes to elect Nixon. Quite interesting. Okay, so let's start our slideshow and visit Outer Mongolia of 1982. And as I said, I think Bill was doing presentations because this is how he had slides starting. Have actually names of the area he visited and in the end he'll be saying the end. Okay, my friends, here you're looking at the capital of Mongolia, Ulan Bator, back in 1982. And if you kind of remove the background, those hills, it looks extremely Soviet. So here we see interesting combinations. So in the front is mostly four to five story high, which we called in Soviet Union Khrushchevka style. So this is Mongolian Khrushchev era uh, apartments. And the background is way taller, nine story high, maybe 13 story high Brezhnev era apartments. They look like brand new. They still bright white, so the construction is going on. The population is growing just like in the Soviet Union. And here's the photo of modern day Ulaanbaatar. High rises are being built. 
city looks quite different from the Soviet era days. There's another nice view. So we have a river in the front and a big tall TV antenna in the back. And here's another photo of modern day Ulan Bator. You could see antenna in, way in the background, kind of in the middle of this shot. So it, it changed a lot. And back to Ulan Bator of 1982. Here in the front, you see two story buildings, probably built in 1930s, 1940s. Then there's a big gap. Not sure what's going on there. And then you got taller buildings from 1950s and 1980s. Once again, 1982 Lan Butter with the view of the main power plant. It's definitely coal burner, or as we say, dirt burner. And it's polluting the air quite badly. It looks ugly. And that's the same power plant in modern days, Ulan Butter. It's still coal burning plant, but they definitely put some scrubbers because smoke is not black anymore. And to the left, they installed uh, it's a natural draft cooling tower, so they have probably a shortage of water in the river or maybe because of environmental concerns to eliminate warm water discharge into the river, they installed a cooling tower. So that's the modern day Ulan Bator. Another interesting object on this slide besides the polluting power plant is the public transportation. You'll see that yellow bus and it's a Soviet made LIAZ, Liaz bus. And one more slide of general view of 1982 Lan Bator with some large factory in the front. I'm not sure what kind of factory was it. Okay, I would like to pay another compliment to the late Uncle Bill because besides standard photos what tourists do, you know, local attractions, churches, mausoleums, you know, nature and stuff, he always did street life. He was hunting for photos on the streets and also people. Like any country he visited, you could tell he would take photos of famous locations, famous places. Then he goes after street life and after people. And it makes his slides so valuable now because I would never waste my film <laughs> taking pictures in Kiev of everyday street, you know, life, street life. And he did. So here's the photo of the hotel that they stayed. So that was a group of American tourists and it's called Ulan Bator, named after the city. I'm not sure what brand there's a bus on the left. It definitely not a Soviet bus, but then we have a dark blue a Volga station wagon, another black Volga, maybe Mongolian KGB. Then another looks like maybe a French car parked. Then we'll, definitely looks like a Lada Vaz. Maybe it's a model eight. Then Moskvich green color and a little UAZ SUV. In military colors and another top you could see on the far right it's another UAZ SUV so a lot of Soviet made vehicles but we have two foreign ones so probably tourists came on their own car and the bus I'm curious if anyone can recognize that bus and here's the close shot so you maybe someone of you can recognize what model is the bus and the French car if it's a French car it looks like Renault to me but it's I'm not sure. And in the front of the main hotel of Ulan Bator, we see, of course, the most important person ever lived in Mongolia. Oh, wait, it's just Vladimir Lenin. Quick Google search will tell you that this statue was removed back in 2012 and originally it was erected in 1954, the same year when Stalin died. And it's actually the main reason why I wanted to show you the slides to show you the level of Sovietization of 1980s Mongolia because I was personally shocked because Ulan Bator looked so much as your average Soviet town. And after going through these slides, I realized why back in the Soviet days we used to call Mongolia almost the 16th Republic of the Soviet Union. It was kind of the rumor on the street that Mongolia wanted to be the 16th Republic, but for some reason, government in Moscow decided, no, nah, it's okay. You can be just the way you are. Okay, so here's the famous Bill's street life photos. And if I would just look at this photo without paying close attention, I would say this is another Soviet town because pretty much every vehicle on the road is Soviet made except one. Right behind the lady on the left, it looks like it's Toyota Land Cruiser. Otherwise, behind the Land Cruiser, there's another Moskvich. Behind Moskvich car, it's a Araf. RAF minivan made in Latvia, UAZ military car SUV behind, another military color SUV on the right, black Volga, 
There is a small uh, pickup truck. It's definitely UAZ Buhanka in the truck. There is a police car. Can't say what the model. So every other vehicle is Soviet made. But that Land Cruiser, if it's Land Cruiser, it's very interesting how it's found its way to Mongolia back in 1982. That peach color building has, it's actually in Russian, but it's also, I guess, in Mongolian, it says cafe. So it's a, like a cafeteria, coffee shop. And even license plates are Soviet style, although they have letters on the top, the numbers below. Soviet license plates had a number first and then letters below. Otherwise, even license plates look the same. Another shot looks like from the same spot, but in a little bit different moment. So right facing you is LAZ bus made in Lviv, Soviet Ukraine. Rough minivan on the left, the green and white, made in Latvia. There is a white color older model Volga. So yeah, <laughs> everything Soviet. Then it's interesting to compare Mongolian city folk. And it looks like there's two guys on the left wearing traditional Mongolian garbs. So that's maybe villagers came to visit Mongolia. Right in the middle of the picture and far back, there's a guy who is definitely wearing Soviet-style police uniform, we call militia. I also find interesting the lady on the right, uh, she's wearing socks with her high heels slip-ons, so that's interesting. But yeah, they dress all modern, there's not a lot of traditional Mongolian outfits. And that little girl, I see her legs, I really looking not good. Here looks like probably a bus stop, people waiting for the bus. Uh, there's a signage behind, and it's the Russian letters once again. It's the word Kino, so it's a movie's advertisement. Blue color a Jeep was kind of different color. Usually they were all military color ones. And once again, another lady on the left wearing red socks with her high heels. So it looks like that was a stylish way of wearing shoes in Mongolia. Another interesting street view shot. So here there's a building behind. I can't tell you what it is, all the letters in Russian, but it makes no sense because it says in Mongolian Masin Bakshin Surgul. But generally, you know, Mongolia considers to be a desert, but looks pretty green. I don't see much trash. Yes, grass is kind of yellowish dry, but overall it's a nice looking town. Some more Soviet vehicles on the Mongolian roads. So you got Red Moskvich. To the right is the GAZ Gaz. <laughs> it's like a Kugelwagen. So there's, you know, there's like a house on the wheels. You see even a chimney sticking out. So that's some kind of like a worker's uh, facility. They park and they stay there while they're working. In the front of that truck, at another LIAZ Liaz city bus in different green color. I remember it's color like that. Then we have two UAZ Buhanka minivans. One is military green, one is kind of yellowish white color. Don't remember uh, that bus with the blue front, but it's based on GAZ truck. PAZ bus to the left. We'll see more of those later. It's actually a pretty busy uh, street. Looks like it. And then you have a traffic police guy standing there in the middle. Okay, and it's Mongolian style apartments. Very similar to the Soviet style. Khrushchevka apartments, five story high. Very small size rooms. Modular design. Behind it's a taller Brezhnev era, nine-story high probably apartments. Grass, as you see, not well kept, probably mowed a couple of times during the season. And it looks like a kindergarten on the left, fenced area with the play area, so that's probably kindergarten. Very nice high-rise apartment here. I had to count 12 stories high with some kind of office or retail store on the bottom, so that looks super modern. I don't recall anything like that in Soviet Union. Ours were 9 story high, the next will be 16 story high. So this is interesting, I like the colors and design, looks very neat, very modern. This picture was taken back by the hotel, so people could park right next to the entry, which is very unusual. You see beautiful black Volga 24, that's usually what Soviet apparatchik, Soviet nomenklatura like to drive. It's interesting, once again, both cars have wipers installed. So maybe in Mongolia they didn't have a problem with uh, people stealing wipers. And that mysterious silver station wagon right behind the Volgas, as I said, I think it's maybe Renault, but maybe you guys know better. Interesting looking building. I would assume it's apartment building, at least on the top two floors. 
This is what they used to call a uh, Stalin key, Stalin era uh, buildings. They were fancier, had the taller ceilings. So it's only three story high, but you see windows are way taller. Another interesting uh, moment, uh, downspouts, I think it's called those uh, tubes coming down from the roof. They stop about 12 feet off the ground. I don't understand why, <laughs> but I can imagine if it's raining in a long butter, the water will be just spilling all over the ground from that height. I assume this is some kind of retail store, but there's no signage, so I, there's no way I could determine what it is. And there's a couple older guys right there, straight ahead, gray hair, and they look American, obviously. And of course, there's a couple older ladies, they look Mongolian, and they're staring at the Americans. And the guy that in a striped shirt, he looks like he's wearing jeans. This is one of my favorite slides from Uncle Bill's collection here. Marxism, Leninism, Mantugai. I know what Marxism is, I know what Leninism is, and Mantugai probably means will prevail. So then you have a portrait of Marx, Engels, and Lenin, a map with the SSSR, USSR. Doesn't show Mongolia, but it shows Soviet Union. You have a Volga 24 taxi car, and behind Volga there's LIAZ -I city bus in that unusual uh, dark green color. I wonder what is that building behind. It looks like it's pretty fancy, maybe Communist Party of Mongolia, the main office or something. Looks like Bill was taking his photos through the window riding on the bus. So the same <coughs> poster, Marxism, Leninism, Mondugai, but now we have a RAF ambulance car. And I wonder why that number 03 kind of looks like was erased, because that's the number we used to call in the Soviet Union to call ambulance, but maybe they used different numbers in Mongolia, so they had to raise this number. But yeah, it's it, this is cool. <laughs> this picture surprised me quite a bit because it's in Russian language. So you see on the top, it's a so-called Orden Oktyabrskoy Revolutsi. So it's an October Revolution medal. And below that, the sign says Slava Velikomu Oktyabru, Glory to the Great October. And it's in Russian language, not in uh, Mongolian. So maybe it's right by the Soviet embassy or it just they just put it in Russian language. And I must mention, uh, photos were taken in 1982, which was the big year in Soviet Union because it was celebration of 60 years since creation of the Soviet Union. So back in 1922, that's when the Soviet Union was created. So in 1982, it's a 60th year's anniversary. There are two interesting vehicles on this photo. So we have a, looks like a drilling rig based on the Soviet ZIL truck and this cute but ugly or ugly but cute minivan and i have no idea what brand is that it's kind of mustard uh, yellow color on the right this building probably was built in early 1900s maybe even late 1800s and there's a on the right side there's a colorful uh, posters for the movies there's a dirt path so people like to do shortcuts that's like soviet people so <laughs> And they like green roofs. Some more Khrushchevka style five story high apartment buildings. And then we see ZIL, Soviet made a fuel tanker truck pulling a trailer behind. This it looks like the main square of Ulan Bator, totally empty. And straight ahead, there's this tall but small building with columns. It's called Kino Theater, so that's the movie theater. Another street view. I'm not sure if they had rain the night before. There's just water trucks were spraying water to keep the dust down on the streets. Obviously, another UAZ SUV. Those were <laughs> looks like they're popular in Mongolia. And an older style Khrushchevka five-story high apartment on the right. Newer style had flat roofs. This one has different style of roof. This photo was maybe taken next to the train station on the right. I'm just assuming that because you have a taxi, Volga M24 waiting, you have two LIAZ city buses parked, and there's the white roof that looks like some kind of tourist bus. I don't know what model it is, but it's definitely not Soviet made. And more older Khrushchevka style apartments here and there. We are back to the glory to the great October square, and here's an interesting little detail in the right corner. That's the mobile store. Auto Muhlag in Mongolian. So they sell, looks like some clothing. Same stuff was done in the Soviet Union. There's a guy in a military uniform, actually a couple of them, and the old uniforms look like Soviet style. 
Definitely didn't spend money on watering the grass, everything looks brown. Another interesting vehicle on the far uh, right side, there's a station wagon based on Volga M21. So there are several slides, several photos taken this main square, which is completely empty, no cars, hardly any people. Pretty crappy blacktop. I almost assume maybe that was used for parades and tank damaged the road. But maybe the main government building on the right, because it has a Mongolian state flag above it. Their monument to someone on a horse, I have no idea. So that's kind of interesting. Probably it was happening on Sunday, so offices were closed. I had to Google to confirm my guess, but this is the monument to Damdin Suhebatar. So that's the Mongolian communist who was fighting white Russians in Mongolia during their civil war. And then, of course, he asked for help from Moscow and Moscow said, okay, we'll help you to fight the bad guys. And that's how Mongolia became Soviet. Another cool street view. And once again, you see two militarily green or olive green UAZ SUVs. Then there's a sign, vertical sign on the left says taxi, taxi, and it's same in Russian. And just uh, people, bright sunny day in Ulaanbaatar, Mongolia. Another instant older building, tall windows. And this is probably 1910th, 1920s. Not sure if it still exists, but it uh, looks like it was hot summer day because windows are open. And this is the state emblem of the People's Republic of Mongolia, Narodne Mongolska Respublika, which was discontinued in February of 1992. And here you see modern days, Mongolian state emblem, so all the Soviet-related signage was removed. Well, you probably recognize these three amigos, Marx, Engels, and Lenin, and the message says Marxism, Leninism, Proletarian, Internationalism, Mantugai. So something about that Marxism, Leninism, and Proletarian Internationalism will prevail. Well, here's the pure Mongolian propaganda banner. It looks quite a bit like Chinese, right? Workers and agriculture workers, and they say Machnin Udirdlagar Socializin Buren Yalalt Urga. I cannot translate that, but general idea is something about socialism will prevail. And this is what I find so almost embarrassing, like how civilization affects other countries. I mean, it's like a same thin different smell and of course you gotta have a hammer and a sickle if you want to be called soviet i found this photo quite interesting because that's advertising posters for theaters and movies but it's not paper it's i believe it's painted on the wall and i can read in russian it says tchaikovsky shilkunchik the nutcracker ballet and the rest is um I cannot translate, but it's interesting. And another example of Soviet-style propaganda message board. I don't know what it says, Mienkh Naira Mandal, but on the left it says Tajikska SSR, so it's Tajik Soviet Socialist Republic. And besides the Tajik flag, it says USSR 60 years, just like I told you. So there's the photos from Tajikistan, now it's called Tajikistan. Not sure what the other in the middle is about, but on the far right, it looks like a ballet, probably mentioned about Shilkunchik. And if you look on the ground, that grass definitely could use some weed whacking. This photo is hilarious because when I looked in a slide, you know, before scanning, it is like, why would you take a picture? It looks like a dog in a balcony. But when I scanned it, I was like, oh my God, people have a sheep on their balcony. This is Mongolia. This is cool. Another street view of Ulaanbaatar. Not many pedestrians, not many cars. I would love to see modern days Google Maps to see, to find the street and compare what it looks like right now. But here you see three military colored UAZ SUVs, military colored UAZ Buhanka van, and quite empty streets, but in a lot of uh, Soviet style propaganda posters. Very modern looking building right here. There's a date, 1982, on the top of the yellow part. Two black Volgas parked in the front. It looks like some kind of Univermag, the department store, but I'm not sure. I bet if I'll find this location in modern Ulaanbaatar, you will see that street became way wider for the cars and the walkways became way more narrow because here it's crazy how wide the walkway for hardly any people. 
and it's funny looking little uh, metal pipe fence i'm not sure what's that preventing from maybe bicycles to ride on the grass a bunch of pedestrians crossing the street on the red light there's one interesting character wearing nice looking black suit there's also military guy and five-story high Khrushchevka style apartment in the background with the grocery store uh, taking some part of the main floor. Now imagine people living on the second floor right above the grocery store. It probably was quite noisy. I found this modern looking 12-story high apartment building quite unusual. I think it's apartment building because it has balconies. Usually they don't put balconies in hotels, but it has a fence. So they don't want a regular pedestrians walk there. So I'm not sure what it is, but fans tells you that's, or it's important people live there, or maybe it's a foreign students or something else, but it's not, has a public access. This building could be a school or some kind of college. And on the right, there's a standard Brezhnika style nine story high apartment building. Some more Khrushchevka style five story high apartment buildings, but they look really modern and cool. I say they look better than the ones we had, for example, in Kyiv. And you could see a little SUV, once again, UAZ military colors tucked between. And just in case, if you don't know what I'm talking about, about modular construction of Khrushchevka style apartments, there's the illustration. The whole section comes, uh, was already assembled from the factory. You just use the crane and just like a Legos, you just pop one on top of the other. This is how you can build Khrushchevka. In literally a week. This is the Mongolian version of Daska Pachota, the Board of Pride. So this is the workers, army officers or other people who did something impressive and they got awards and now their pictures are displayed on this massive concrete pride board. Another impressive building is probably some kind of government building with the picture of Lenin on the top and the same funky minivan parked there. I wonder if that was a Mongolian KGB following uh, this American uh, tourist around. Well, looking at the sign, it says in English Central Post, so I assume it's a Central Postal Office of Ulaanbaatar. Some more military colored SUVs and two, looks like um, traffic cops, policia or militia, on the motorcycles, but unfortunately I can't tell you what kind of motorcycles are those. For some reason I don't think they're Soviet. And of course another must uh, visit place in Ulaanbaatar in Mongolia, it's the Dinosaur Museum. You're probably aware that Mongolia is one of the prime locations for finding dinosaur bones. I like this photo a lot, so this is apparently some old building under reconstruction. There's the people have a special type of scaffolding uh, built to restore window treatments and as i mentioned earlier uncle bill always wanted to make sure he takes photos of local people so there's a couple of cool photos of it looks like he they visited uh, a monastery somewhere in alan butter so he was uh, taking photos of uh, monks and old people that come to visit pretty neat right there so after visiting alan butter uh, this group of american tourists uh, flew to the inner mongolia and they use this airplane called AN-24B, so it's Antonov. Quite possible my father painted this plane because he used to work at the Antonov airplane factory in Kiev. And I know some of you guys know how to determine the history of the planes based on the numbers. So please uh, post in the comment section, it would be nice to find out. Parking lot next to this landing strip in Inner Mongolia, more UAZ SUVs and PAZ bus looks like american tourists uh, hopped on the bus and i just want to say out of small size buses i've always thought that paz buses were the cutest and looks like they arrived to the destination this is a camp in mongolian style uh, using so-called yurti i believe so you see they have a um, uh, wood burning stoves inside and people came to spend here a couple of days probably to explore the area and spend the nights in this yurt. Here's some good slides of the Mongol faces, Mongol people. I assume that's the people who work at this campsite. I'm not sure, but they were happily posing for, for the tourists. He's an interesting uh, person, older Mongolian guy with a lot of awards. I wish I could recognize what kind of medals are those. Are they related to the military activities in 1930s and 1940s or Maybe just uh, he's a hero of labor. Here's the lady showing the um, National Mongolian 
dress outfit cool looking shoes nice decorations on the door as well and this photo is so so cute i'm not sure what the girl is holding in her hand but this is adorable picture here's my favorite paz buzz buzz and looks like got stuck a guy is uh, working with the shovel <laughs> because those are not all-wheel drive and here's a group of american tourists with their cameras exploring mongolian steppes the places where the hordes of Chinggis khan used to roam it seems as uncle bill really liked soviet uaz suvs because they're quite often in his photos he is just speeding by and he's trying to take a good picture of that and here's the landscape of inner mongolia quite a bit of hills and i there were a lot of photos, but I just picked the ones that looked the best, especially to have uh, vehicles, just to give you perspective how big the hills were. So, a really interesting area. I would, would love to hike there. So, yeah, that's really neat. That's an interesting way to park your pass bus, but maybe that's a picnic for tourists. Or, I'm not sure what else could be, but there's some kind of signage on the bus so i assume it's a tourist bus as well and several more photos of the locals as you see they all dress quite modern people wearing jeans or sports sweatsuits so country already is changing and it's only 1982 and there's a couple of photos of i'm not sure is that a collective farm or some kind of factory in the middle of nowhere but there's a there it is <laughs> and uncle bill found some Communist propaganda even at that place in the middle of nowhere. So the black thing kind of curling down, it says capitalism, capitalismig. Something up, I assume it's a socialism, but I can't read. It's called Gust. And of course, Comrade Lenin looking forward towards the communism. And it says Bolno. <laughs> in Russian, Bolno means it's painful well this concludes this long and boring video i really appreciate if you guys made it all the way till the end so don't forget to like this video maybe post a comment and right after this there'll be a short slideshow there's a couple more slides i would like to show you but i don't know what to tell about them so just uh, there'll be some music playing and you can uh, see some more of mongolia of 1982 thank you so much for watching the show the goodbye